Okay guys, Sam here. Uh, I've got a bucket full of dead fish here. We're doing something a little bit different on the channel today. I'm going to show you guys how we um, attract and feed stingrays here on the East Cape of the North Island of New Zealand. So, um, yeah, we'll head over to the rocks and I'll show you guys how we do it. Right guys, so basically what I've got here, if you couldn't tell, is the uh, skeleton of a snapper that we caught this morning actually and we've filleted it and skinned it and um, I'm sure you guys will see that in a video um, if not you've already seen it then probably at some point in the future but basically what you do um, we've got a rope here just an old ass rope and you just tie the fish to it somehow I think what I like to do is just go straight through the eyes and um, just go straight through the eye holes through the skull because it's quite a strong um, solid objects that it's harder for the stingrays to rip it off because um, you have to go through the skull of the snapper so you just kind of shove it through all right here we go so we've already got some seagulls around because they know that there's food available here i just tie in a, just a normal i don't know double half hitch or something it's a simple as not it's not it doesn't really matter too much to be honest and um yeah so now this is tied basically all you do is uh, you make sure you're holding onto the rope and just chuck it in the water. Now the most important thing that I found out, um, well, you've got to make sure you know which way the tide's going. So we're quite lucky, even though uh, well, the tide's still going out, it's almost dead low, but we've also got this rip here which carries any scent out um, straight out that way, which is where the stingrays are. And another thing that I've learned over the years is that whacking, and whacking the snapper or whacking the fish against the rocks and just bouncing it up and down which makes a lot of splashing noises actually helps attract the stingrays. I've actually had a few come in and then go to leave and then I've kind of splashed the thing around and then they turn around and come back so obviously they've heard the um, yeah, they can hear the splashing and that's what attracts them. This is a pretty decent sized one actually right here. Oh, he's gonna come right up to my feet. Okay, <laughs> yeah, mate. There we go. So the cool thing about these stingrays is that they don't really have teeth. Even though they're kind of, they're more or less the same family as sharks and that they're cartilaginous fish, but they don't have bones, they have cartilage instead. Um, they don't really have teeth like a shark. I don't know if you've been to aquariums or whatever um, and seen that they, um, they don't really have teeth. They have like a, almost like a smiley face type mouth um, and that's what they use to detect um, dead fish and crabs and things like that to eat um, so it means that when a stingray grabs onto the fish when you're on the rope you can just kind of hold on to it let him chew on it for a bit then you can pretty much just yank it out of his mouth and then he'll let go and swim off and maybe come around for round two um, which makes it pretty safe to deal with um, not safe enough that um, you know I'm not going to jump in the water with them. I, I do look up to Steve Earl, but not that much. I actually reckon, as well as their real good sense of smell, I reckon the reason that banging the fish on the rocks and kind of bouncing them up and down um, works so well is I reckon I wouldn't be surprised if they had kind of the same um, almost sixth sense that sharks have where um, they can prick up vibrations in the water and by bouncing the fish and by smashing it against rocks it almost sends out an electrical signal through the water almost like a dying fish, like a distress signal I mean the fish is certainly dead already but um, the stingrays don't know that um, so I wouldn't be surprised, There's, I have to fact check that So this species of stingray is called a short-tailed stingray and they are prevalent pretty much all around New Zealand waters. I'm sure they're found in Australia and similar places like that. I'm sure they're a worldwide species. They're probably one of the, if not the most common species of stingray um, in the world, I'd assume. Um, they're just bloody everywhere to be honest. We've got a couple other species around here um, in New Zealand. One of the main ones is the eagle ray. And I've seen a couple of them around here. They're a lot smaller. Uh, they're brown or tan in shape. And instead of like the circular shape that these stingrays have, they have triangle shaped wings. And um, so those are eagle rays. A lot of people just call them stingrays just as like a generic term, but technically they are eagle rays. 
Um, and I'm pretty sure just off the top of my head that stingrays and eagle rays are the, the two main species of ray around New Zealand. We don't really get manta rays or anything like that nearby, um, kind of around here. So a good way to maintain the stingray's attention um, is by constantly getting new flavours or um, but not quite new flavours but new extra smells into the water to incite them to come back because um, a lot of the time they'll do maybe a couple pass bys and if they haven't eaten anything then they'll turn around and leave so stepping on the snapper or stepping on the fish carcass or smashing it into rocks to break to break open maybe the internal organs or just to let a bit of makeshift burly flow out is a good way to bring them around to bring them back around we've actually got a whole another fish carcass that's um we wanting that i'm wanting to bring in soon Alright, so he's grabbed, he's grabbed it now, I don't know if you guys can see him, but he's just here, he's grabbed it now, I'm just letting him chew on it a bit, just so he gets a bit more excitement, he actually gets a bit of food. It almost turns into a bit of a game of tug of war, um, until eventually he decides to spit it out. You can see here, a bit more of the flesh has been kind of stripped away, um, and he's just, they, they kind of just suck really hard, they, they don't really bite into it per se, they just kind of try and suck all the meat out and suck all the internal organs out. So I think what we'll do is we'll grab the next uh, fish carcass that we have, which is, a, this is a snapper, we'll grab a tarakihi that we caught this morning as well, and uh, we'll chuck that on the rope as well, and I'll see if I can um, get a bit closer, maybe even hand feed them, we'll see what happens. So that dude right there, uh, his name is Chopper. And um, he, he's come by a couple years, um, for a couple years. Um, we call him Chopper because the top of his tail looks like it's been clean chopped off. Um, there's another one that lives around here called Stumpy. And he's similar to Chopper in the sense that we can identify him by looking at his tail. Um, but instead of, like half of his tail is gone, it's just a stump. Um, hence the name. Uh, there's a couple other ones that are a bit harder to identify. Um, the main one, the first ever stingray we saw here actually. Massive, massive stingray, the size of a dinner table. Her name's Nikki. And we named her Nikki after Nicki Minaj's butt, of course, because naturally, um, that's what you do. So, there's, yeah, there's a couple stingrays, and the point is, um, I always thought stingrays were quite migratory. They kind of pass through and they just keep going on their way. But these ones appear to, at least in this case, stay around the general area. Or if they are migratory, they come past here the same spot every year around summertime. So that's another thing. This is by no means a guaranteed way to get stingrays um, in your area. If you've got no stingrays around, um, it just happens to be no stingrays in the area, then you're not going to get any stingrays. But if you have some inkling that there might be stingrays somewhere, then you might as well give this a try and you might get some stingrays on your hands. Um, now this is just a disclaimer. Um, just kind of whacking this fish here with my hand. Um, I've never actually tried this before. Um, I've never actually probably tried feeding with just my bare hand. Um, I'm assuming that, I mean, they've got vision well enough to probably see me out of the water, so I'm not sure if they're actually going to come up and take the bait. But if they do, I'm not going to attempt to hold on to the fish, I'll just let it go and let them take it. Um, we've actually got one coming up here now, he's just kind of passing by. I keep smacking the fish on the surface, hopefully he'll pinpoint its location and come up just like he is now. Oh, here we go. And if you can get it... So he's just, he's just passed by. There you go, he's coming up again. If you can get them to touch it with the tip of their snout, there we go. And then they properly figure out right where it is. If you can get it to touch right at the tip of their nose, because that's where their sensory organs um, That's where most of their sensory organs are just like a shark. So the interesting, another interesting thing about stingrays is that even though they're everywhere, um, science, as far as I know, seems to know quite little about them. Um, now, feel free to correct me on this, but I believe no one's ever actually captured stingrays mating before on camera. Um, we even really know much about their mating habits. Um, 
to be fair though, I haven't really done any research. Oh, I just got water on my gumboot. Um, but I haven't actually really done any research for this video. Um, I'm just going off information that I've learned off wildlife documentaries over my life and I don't know, common sense, I suppose. So yeah, but not much seems to be known about stingrays, which is really interesting because they're such awesome, beautiful animals. Okay, mate. There we go. Oh, there we go. Hey, you like that, mate? Yeah. <laughs> you should have touched it. I know, I didn't, I didn't properly feel it quite. I feel like I need, I probably should have let go of the fish a little bit earlier. I wanted to hold it with him. Um, probably got a little bit cocky there, but he got right up close, which is real cool. Um, and hopefully, since he, he might do that a couple more times, um, and then finally decide I'm not a threat and then actually trust me enough to pull up, come up and take the fish from my hands. So what you want to do to get in the hang around, ideally you want to have multiple fish carcasses and um, actually feed them to this and let the stingrays actually eat the fish so then they hang around wanting more. So I'll just, you just untie it and throw it back when you're done. It's pretty simple. You let nature take its course and um, yeah, let nature, let nature take its course and the stingrays eventually get the uh, get the food thereafter. So, you know, the smarter option actually, now I've just thought of it, now I'm holding this much bigger snapper carcass, the smarter thing to want to hand feed them, instead of using something like a tiny little tarakihi carcass, maybe instead, you want to use a much longer and easier for them to grab carcass, like a snapper carcass, and then they can actually grab the tail, which is much easier for them. Um, so there's a bit more distance, and they feel a little bit safer around you. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoy this little strange little how-to video. Um, and uh, yeah, even if you didn't learn how to uh, get the stingrays to come by, at least you learned how to get bloody water in your gumboots. Alrighty, see you later.